Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking about the 23 books that I ended up reading in October. Baby, baby. Yes, I read 23 books in October, which is kind of a high number for me currently because of school. However, I want to say half of them or more are novellas. <laughs> I have been in a headspace where I've only been wanting to read novellas, short romances, anything over 300 pages, I'm like, get away from me. Unless it's an audiobook format. If it's an ebook or a physical book, no way am I reading a book over 300 pages at this point. But yeah, most of the books on here are either audiobooks or novellas on my Kindle app. <laughs> so let's jump right on into these books. Um, first, I'm going to talk about my one DNF for the month, which was captured by VK Ludwig. You're going to see later on in this video that I ended up reading a novella by VK Ludwig and I enjoyed it. And so I was like, why not just go and continue on with the series? But I realized that the novel novella that I read is a spinoff to an original series. So I was like, let's go read the original series then. I should not have picked up this book. <laughs> yeah, I DNF this book at 54%. This is an enemy celebrity's alien faded mate romance. I was loving this book at the beginning. The hero like tackles the heroine to like capture her and take her back to his ship with a bunch of other humans because they it, the aliens have captured Earth. But then it just no. <laughs> they realize that they're faded mates even though they hate one another. The hero is basically like I will free you if you uh, get pregnant by me or like if you carry my heirs you can be free. And then all of a sudden she stopped hating him and started loving him and super disappointing. Didn't care for this unfortunately. And then um, before we get into the other books, I want to mention that I did reread a book. I reread Radiance by Grace Draven, my favorite romance book ever. I wanted to reread this because I hadn't read the third book in this series yet, which is a book I'm currently reading right now. And so I wanted to reread the series. Um, and so I love Radiance. Of course, this is a fantasy romance book, a friends to lovers, the epitome of a friends to lovers. If you've never read a good friends to lovers and you don't like friends to lovers, read this book and it will change your mind. Now we're going to be talking about the books that I read this month from my least favorite read to my favorite read towards the end of the video. So my least favorite read of the month was unfortunately Brutal Mate by Lee Savino and Tabitha Black. Okay so this is a romance between Emma and Khan. Emma is a human from Earth who accidentally fell through an alien portal that was on Earth. Then some aliens found her in that portal and then put her up as a slave auction kind of thing. The hero is this alien species who are trying to find Omega mates. He's an alpha and he can like send her at this auction and he basically kidnaps her from the auction. This book was not it for me. Just like the one I DNF'd, I should have DNF'd this one. I thought it was gonna get better. It did not. Since I've read this book, I think I've realized that maybe Omega verse books are just not for me because this is the second book or third book that I've read where Omegaverse is put into the book and I have hated it because it makes me feel like the heroine is being sexually assaulted the entire time. So if you didn't know, a lot of the times in Omegaver Omegaverse books, the Omega, their body is very attracted to the Alpha. Like it'll start getting itself ready for the Alpha, it will be attracted to the Alpha, and it'll want to do stuff with the Alpha. However, the person who is the Omega, their brain is just like, get me the F away from this person. I don't want to be with him, but their body is making them be with this person. So like their body and their mind are contradicting each other the entire time. And it just makes me feel like they're being sexually assaulted the entire time. Like they don't want to do this and their body is forcing them to. Like they don't want to do it. <laughs> it just, it turns my stomach sour every time that I've read one of these books. Like, I'm just like, mm, no thanks. <laughs> There's also another thing in here that kind of bugs me. Um, it's a little nitpicky, but again, if you know me personally, if I find something I don't like about the book, I nitpick everything else throughout the rest of the book. So this is something that really grinded my gears. So I have a few friends in my life who don't want to have children in their lives. Like they don't want to have, not in their lives, like they don't want to conceive their own children. They don't want a child in their life. Like they don't want to be parents, which is totally understandable. Not everyone wants to be a parent and not everyone should be parent, you should do whatever you want to do. And so the heroine in this book, she is known for forever. She does not want to have kids. She does not want to have kids. And again, it's very normal for someone to change their mind. If someone does want to have kids all of a sudden, go ahead, go right on ahead. However, I would think that there would be some progression to that, not just an immediate switch, you know? <laughs> like there has to be some thought and discussion about it. And it was not in here. Um, the hero wanted the heroine to have his babies, have kids, and she was really pissed at him when she first got captured by him. And she's like, 
I've never wanted children. You're not gonna force me to have kids. I don't want kids. Of course, the hero is mad, whatever. It's a little bit of a spoiler, but whatever. The hero and the heroine, they get in this like dangerous predicament and like right before the book ends, she's like, you know what? I actually want to have kids. I'm just like, where did you come up with that? Like, where was your reasoning for changing your mind? Like, I don't understand that. And it just, it bugs me. I needed a reason. I need a reason. And you didn't give me one. You did not. There was not enough development for the switch for me. And there was not a, enough development for the romance between the two characters in here for me. Again, not my alien romance book at all. I gave this one two stars and I think I might bump it down to a one because I did not enjoy this literally at all. Next, <laughs> I read Suffer Less by KB Everly. Um, this is available to download off of Kindle Unlimited if you want to check it out. This is about Alessa and she has a very traumatic past in her life. Her parents died in a car crash and she was in that car and her leg, she was the only survivor and her leg had to be amputated because of it. So she is an amputee. It's a few years later, she works in this grungy rundown bar and club and these three guys come across her. They end up saving her from being assaulted by this other guy at the club. Um, and then they put her on the back of their bike and they ask her to go with them to their hometown because they've been traveling around the U.S. on their motorcycles and they're like we're going back home do you want to come home with us and she's like I'd love to leave this town let's do it. So this book was really promising to me and it was starting to become a romance book that I love that has a road trippy aspect in it that I actually enjoyed which if you don't know me I hate road trip romances in contemporary settings I just do and so I was like hmm maybe this is the exception. I was wrong. Like the beginning of this book was really fun but then once they got to their destination it got boring. <laughs> this is a reverse harem. So like there's three guys with the heroine um, and they all live in their house together that these guys live in. Like she moves in with them. There was honestly just a lot of aspects in this book. A lot of things going on. Too many things going on. And the romance in here I didn't really like. There's only like one scene with each guy. So I don't really like when authors, when they write a bed scene after every time they like, after every time it happens, the chapter just ends and they wake up the next morning after it or like once they do stuff like they immediately get up and walk away like oh we're done whatever time to get on with the rest of your day and i'm just like where's the reveling in it where's the cuddling in bed where's the falling asleep in each other's arms where is the love did not see it here the main thing that i loved about this book and the reason why it's not getting less than a three star from me is because the disability rep i think was done phenomenally well the author of this book i believe is also an amputee so i thought that was done so well in here the romance part however not my cup of tea still have not found a reverse harem book that i really enjoy have not yet <laughs> for trigger warnings of this book you have sexual assault you have a car crash death of a loved one there's a kidnapping scene uh, death scene and death from overdose. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on in this one. Next, I read a novella that was recommended by Charles from Books on Stereo. Um, he recommended Haven by Darcy Rose. This is a very short step sibling romance. Dean and Eve, their parents got married a few years ago and Eve has always had a little crush on Dean and she just turned 18. It's her 18th birthday and Dean comes to visit her on her 18th birthday and when he sees her, he's like, oh my gosh, I've never seen Eve this way before. I am very attracted to her. <laughs> I thought this was super fun, super hot, um, and I'm interested in the rest of the series. I do feel like there could have been more added, so I ended up just giving this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Here we have another novella. <laughs> I read a bunch of novellas, so just watch out. <laughs> I read Bulky by Jessica Kane. This is another big boy romance, and I love Jessica Kane's big boy romances. Um, however, this one was not my favorite one. So yeah, this is about Josie and Gunner. And Josie has always had a really big crush on Gunner um, because Gunner is her best friend's dad. Um, and so she uh, finally decides enough is enough. I'm finally gonna get this man. And she comes on to him and Gunner is trying to control himself because he's always been attracted to Josie, but she's very young. This is an age gap romance. That is his kid's best friend. This was really entertaining, of course. Any Jessica Kane book I feel like is entertaining in some way. So I just gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I next listened to Wicked Sexy Liar by Christina Lauren. This is the last book in the Wild Season series. This one, I don't know if it's this one or one of the other books is my least favorite book in the series. Just like this one didn't float my boat as much as other people, I guess. I'm reading a bunch of my friends reviews and they loved this one and I don't get why. <laughs> Like, I didn't love it at all. This is about London and Luke. So London is the best friend to one of the best friends and roommates with one of the girls from the previous books. And Luke is the ex-boyfriend from the heroine from book one. He's a total ladies man. 
total ladies man and you read about that from the beginning this is a relationship between london and luke they meet at a bar both of them are not into relationships they don't want relationships but then they start hooking up and then luke is like "Ooh, i might actually want this girl and london is like i don't do that son <laughs> and she's like guarding her heart from him because she doesn't really want to she's been hurt in the past so she doesn't want to be in that situation again. At the beginning, I did not really like this one. Luke did not appeal to me as a hero and I don't really like heroes who decide that the heroine of this book is the one girl in the entire world they want just because they don't want them to commit. I thought the reason why he didn't want London is because she is the one girl in all the world who didn't want to keep him because that sometimes happens in romances and that kind of makes me upset. <laughs> However, throughout the story, he kind of grew on me a little bit. So that's why this is a 3.5 out of 5 star book for me. He grew on me a little bit throughout the book. He is, however, my least favorite hero in this series. Cannot compare to the other three, in all honesty. I do like how these characters fully broke down their walls and fell in love with one another. I thought that was very believable. Another novella by Jessica Kane. I read this month. Um, we have Caught by the Convicts. So this is about Wendy and she goes to her town's penitentiary to go see her dad in jail. Her dad was very horrible to her as a child and he is in jail and she's trying to see him there to make sure that he is actually there and she's not making it up in her brain because she see, thinks that the only way she will be safe and not have nightmares anymore and not be scared for her life anymore is if she sees her dad behind bars and is like knows for sure that he is in jail. And so she's visiting him or trying to go just see him to make sure he's there. And then there's a prison break and a prison riot. And so while she's at this jail, these two guys who share a cell together, take her to their cell and they get it on, okay? <laughs> it's very hot, it's very fun. I thought this was gonna be an MFM romance, but then it turned into an MMF romance. That's something I love. That's the main thing I loved about this book is the transition from MFM to MMF. Yeah, and if you don't know, MFM means the guys in the thrumble situation don't touch. MMF means that they do and they get together. So it's all three of them together. I do wish that there was more to the story. Like you don't get to, get to really read about the heroes breaking out from jail because they break out from jail to go see the heroine. Like you don't see that scene. And there's just some other scenes I would have loved to read in here. So I feel like ugh, if Jessica Kane would write full length novels, I feel like this could be a great one she could make into a full length novel. So I just ended up giving this one a 3.5 out of five stars. I next read two books in the Bedlam Butcher series by Ruby Dixon. This is her motorcycle club series. Um, I read Double Down um, and this is a continuation to if you watch my video from last month I talked about how um, there's this girl named Shy in the previous books and she is in a thruple situation with Beast and Muscle. They're two people from a motorcycle club. The guys are not together. It's an MFM romance and this is just a continuation of their story. I'm not going to go too deep into this one. It's a motorcycle club series. This one is a 3.5 out of 5 stars from me and then I also read the next book in the series as well and this is another continuation of their story. So there's like three novellas surrounding this couple and this one is the like the finale of their story. Like their story wraps up in this novella and I liked this one a little bit more than the previous two so I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. You remember how I talked about that one book? I DNF'd. This is the novella that I read before I read that book that I really enjoyed. Um, this is called Ash Planet Warriors by VK Ludwig. This is a very short alien romance between Leah and Zerum. Zerum. Leah is a human woman whose spaceship ends up crashing on Zerum's alien planet and Zerum comes across the crash pod and decides to help her gain strength and acclimate to this new world. The two of them spend a few days in the alien wild before Zerum brings Leah to the city where she will hopefully get passage back home. But neither of them assumed that there would be this huge attraction to one another. This is a freebie. I think it's still free on Amazon if you want to go check it out. Um, and this is just a prequel to their actual romance that will happen in this series. This ends on like a little bit of a cliffhanger because they're like full length the romance will happen later on in the series. I am looking forward to their romance. I kind of, I do want to read it. However, I wanted to read the series that takes place before this one first so I could like know more, but I did not like that first book. So I'm like nervous if I actually want to read this book or not. But overall, I really liked it. So I gave it four stars. Next, I read The Jackal by J.R. Ward. This is the first book in her Black Dagger Brotherhood prison camp series. This is a spinoff of the Black Dagger Brotherhood. You do see some of the brothers pop up in this book. I feel like you need to read any books in the Black Dagger Brotherhood universe all in publication order, but that's just my opinion. So this is about a female vampire named Nyx, and she has been on the search for years for her 
uh, sister. Her sister was put in a prison camp, but she's been trying to find this prison camp for years. She is trying to find the prison because she thinks her sister has been wrongfully in prison. So she's trying to find it, hopefully take her out of the place. She finally finds this prison, finally, at the beginning of this book. It takes her years. And when she gets into the prison, she comes across the Jekyll. He's another prisoner and has been a prisoner for over 100 years. And then right when the Jekyll sees Nyx, he knows that he has found his mate. If you didn't know, this is a spinoff to the Black Tiger Brotherhood series. This is a vampire romance series. Both of these people are vampires. I did like this book. I love any book I feel like that J.R. Ward writes. However, the insta-love, insta-lust thing just, I think, happened way too fast for me. There wasn't really any angst between the two of them which I kind of enjoy in Black Tiger Brotherhood books. I even wrote in my review I said I do kind of miss the angst and push and pull she like J.R. Ward wrote in the beginning of her BDB series because we're not really getting that in her in her newer ones I feel like and I I want I think I want that spark back that angst back. However, I did end up liking the couple in the series in the end and I really like how they intertwined with the main series like their their characters how their characters were related to or like how they interacted with the Black Decker Brotherhood. Some trick warnings in here if you want to read this book is death, sexual assault, gore, and suicide. I ended up giving this book a four out of five stars. Then I have My Dad's Best Friend by Katie Robert. This is the third book in the Touch of Taboo series. Um, I have two more books to read in this series until I'm done. This is a very forbidden romance between Blake and Jonas. Jonas is Blake's dad's best friend and so he's been off limits for years obviously and this book starts out with Blake appearing on Jonas's uh, doorstep to ask for help for her new job but then she gets stuck in her house because of the rainstorm and there's like a weather warning and everything and so they decide to blow off some steam with one another over the weekend. Of course, this, like any Katie Robert book, this book was fun, it was hot, the audiobook was perfection, amazing, the narrators were great. Of course, I really liked this one and I gave it a four out of five stars. I have another novella for you. We have the, uh, no, it's just called Pool Girl by Cassie Mint. I read about this book or I learned about this book from Lisa from Remarkably Lisa. She said it's like The Pool Boy by Nikki Sloan, but I've never read that book. Um, so I picked this one up because it's only like, 48 pages long and my brain right now only wants to read very short novellas. <laughs> Hi guys. I I'm angry at the moment. I'm really angry at Apple. I'm so mad. Okay, if you didn't know, I film on my phone. This is a 7 a 7 7s seven something like that, a 7. And I don't buy new technology unless that said technology is completely busted in the dust, shattered not usable at all. I don't have money to go buy a new cell phone just because a new one comes out for fun. Like, n I can't do that. But Apple likes to do this thing where they make your phone crash all the time if you have an old phone. My phone is probably one of the oldest ones there is currently right now. And so it's crashing on me all the time. So yeah, I tried to film again and it just didn't work. So you're on my photo booth right now. And I'm sorry if this bugs you. Um, but I'm honestly very frustrated right now and I just want to get through these books and I have I filmed like seven books in this one clip and it only got the first one for you the pool girl one um so I'm going to be positive right now I'm gonna be as positive as possible this is what we have to work with I don't have a camera I only film on my phone I do not have money to go buy a camera or a new phone right now and so I think I just have to remember that I have to restart my phone every time I film now. Like, that just has to be a thing. <sighs> so I am very frustrated right now, but I'm just trying to, trying, trying to be positive, okay? Okay, so let's talk about these books. This is going to be my third time talking about some of these. <laughs> um, I ended up reading The Sea Witch by Kenny Robert. This is the next book in the Wicked Villain series. This is a retelling of The Little Mermaid with Ursula, Eric, and Ariel. So the three of them get together. Um, I love the Wicked Villain series. I love Kenny Robert's writing. The audiobook in this was just amazing, so I, I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four to five stars. I then read The Witch's Wolves by Ellie Mae McGregor. This is a little, little Red Riding Hood retelling. The Little Red in here, her name is Manon, and she's running away from her village because they labeled her as a witch, and while she's running away in the woods, she comes across this cabin, and these two men live in this cabin who are in a relationship with one another and right when they meet Manon they realize that they want to include Manon in their relationship as well. Um, This is a monster romance. The guys in here are like 
human wolf hybrid creatures um it was super fun super hot i really like this one and i really love the author's writing and i definitely want to read more of her books i do wish that this was longer just because i i loved it so much um so yeah this is on kindle unlimited if you want to check it out but i ended up giving this one a four out of five stars as well i then read the last book in the wallflower series by lisa Klepas. i'm going to talk about book three later on in this video um but this one is scandal in spring um yeah so this is about daisy bowman and you read about her and her sister and the rest of the wallflowers throughout this series daisy has been tasked to find a husband while she has been in england but she has not yet found one and her dad gives her a deadline and it's like if you don't find a husband by this specific date you have to marry my business partner Partner, Matthew Swift and she's like oh no I do not want to do that <laughs> she does not really like Matthew Swift she thinks he's a stuck-up snob who will do anything for her father but in reality Matthew is just totally smitten over Daisy um and he just is in love with her so this romance is about the two of them um meeting each other again coming together again um and falling in love with one another I enjoy this one it's not my favorite in the series for sure but I do love the ending of this series and how it all wrapped up and how you got to see all the couples in, in this one at the end. I also gave this one a four out of five stars. I then read Ensnared by Tiffany Roberts. This was my member pick. So I had my members pick me a pick me a book to read pick a book for me to read there you go pick a book for me to read every month and I put it on a spinner wheel um and yeah this one won my lovely friend Jen from the book refuge picked this one out for me this is about Katon and Ivy Katon is the alien spider creature in this one Ivy's spaceship ends up crash landing on Katon's planet he ends up accidentally waking Ivy up from the cryo sleep chamber she is in and he thinks that she is a pet and so he takes her back to his um nest and then he realizes that no she's actually a person a human woman who is very intelligent and is an actual human being and they might actually be mates um i really like this one i love alien romances of course i love tiffany roberts they're an amazing author duo um, I thought this was done incredibly well. I love the language barrier trope in here, of course. And so I gave this one a four to five stars. I can't wait to read the other two books a part of this series. Then I read uh, No Getting Over You by Marie, no, by M. Eliza. Um, this is a short novella. I love this one. This was so fun. Um, this is about Jacqueline and Krug. So Jacqueline is walking on a hike, going on a hike, and she falls into this cavern. Krug lives in that cavern, ends up taking her to his lair, and they, uh, get it out together. <laughs> this was so fun and hot. I really loved this. Um, I just wish there was more to the ending. That's why it's not a full five stars for me. But man, if you want a hot, fun monster romance, this one is definitely one to pick up for sure. If you have KU, read this one. I then have my other book, a part of the Wallflower series that I read this month, I read Devil in Winter. This is the romance between Ivy and Sebastian. You read about them in the previous books as well in this series. Uh, Sebastian is kind of like the villain for one of the previous books and Ivy comes to um, Sebastian to make a proposition to him because she knows that he is wanting some money and she knows she's very rich but she's trying to find a husband um, to get out of her family's out from under her family's thumb because her family is very controlling and abusive so she's like if i marry you you can get i can get away from my family and you can get my money and he's like awesome let's do it let's get married and so they get married um uh, both of them knowing that they will never love the other person but they end up getting to know the other person and they do fall in love with one another i personally love ivy in here she's so sweet and i love how confident she became she at the beginning of this book and in this series has a very se severe stutter um she's very shy and meek but i feel like sebastian really helps her come out of her shell and realizes who she really is and gain confidence in, her, in herself sebastian i love how you got to see him fully melt into a puddle for this woman because he totally did <laughs> i really enjoyed this one there's a trigger warning in here for death of a loved one so just beware going into this but i really love this one and i gave it a five out of five stars i then read uh people we meet on vacation by emily henry this is a friends to lovers romance between alex and poppy who were college friends and this book flip flops into previous time and present time and present time alex and poppy are not friends at all okay sorry i just had to readjust you you're on my lap right now um anyway um i really enjoyed this romance um i love friends to lovers y'all know that you're trying to figure out why alex and poppy are not friends in current day anymore um and so it like flip flops times to previous vacations they took because they used to take vacations every 
uh summer together i think you figure out what happened between the two of them why they're not friends anymore uh towards the end of the book like it's like leading up to this and so i really enjoy this one i think this is a great friends to lovers if you want to read a friends to lovers romance and so i gave this book a five out of five stars next i read the fourth book in the bergman brothers series by chloe lee's called with you forever this is the romance between axel and rooney who you got to read about in the previous books this is also a marriage of convenience romance so rooney is going to the bergman brothers cabin for the weekend because she was invited to go just stay the weekend by herself for some alone time. She doesn't realize that Axel is going to be there um, and he is actually at the cabin renovating it and he actually does not realize how expensive it is to renovate this cabin. And so Rooney and Axel get in this marriage of convenience so that Axel can get um, some inheritance from his uncle and in his uncle's will he stipulated that he could not get any money unless he was married. Um, and so they get married to get this money. And through them being married to one another, they have to admit their feelings for one another because the two of them have been totally smitten with one another since day one. Um, I loved the diversity in this book. Well, obviously in the series, the series is great with diversity. Um, I loved Rooney as a fellow stomach issue sufferer. <laughs> I have gastro issues too. Our heroine has ulcerative colitis, I think that's what it's called. Um, and so I totally felt her pain. And having to have a bathroom next to you 24 7 and having to know where the bathroom is all the time i really saw myself in rooney i really loved her and then i really loved axel too and how he fully fell in love with rooney axel also has autism so there's that representation in here as well and i just thought this was done so well i love chloe lease and i can't wait to read more of her books whenever they come out i gave this book a five out of five stars oh we have a fun one we have a fun one y'all i read adarion by uh, ruby dixon or adiron adiron I'd never know how to pronounce his name, y'all. Um, this is the first book in the Corsair Brothers series. I do recommend reading the other books in the series, in the spinoff series before you read this one, like the Ristover series and the Corsair series before you read this one. This is the romance between Adiron and uh, Jade. Jade is a human woman. I think she's a plus size woman of color, by the way. So there's that representation as well. Um, and Adarion comes across her spaceship one day with his brothers and thinks it's abandoned, but it's not. And the human women like end up stealing from them and knocking them out. And <laughs> he is just totally smitten with her. Oh my gosh. He sees that she's trying to like rob him and he is just grinning at her. And it's like, I think I'm in love with you. You, what? <laughs> And so from that point on, he wants nothing more than Jade to be his mate. <laughs> this is so cute. I love this. I love how he swooned over Jade and would do anything for Jade. And Jade slowly starts to fall in love with him. She's very hesitant at first because she's been through some trauma with aliens doing some horrible things to her. I can't wait to read the rest of the series. I think there's two other ones currently out. Um, I think I'm gonna love them. I just love this couple so much and I love how the hero totally swooned and fell for the woman. If you want a good romance where like the hero falls first, this is definitely an amazing one to read. And lastly, my favorite book of the month was Dragon Unleashed by Grace Draven. This is the second book in the Fallen Empire series. The first book in the series is called Phoenix Unbound and ooh, I love this book. I love this book. <laughs> if you want to fully love this book though, you need to read the first book of the series before you read this one called Phoenix Unbound. Grace Draven is amazing. I love her. She's a goddess. I love her so much. Um, so this is a fantasy romance between Helani and Malakis. Um, Helani is an earth witch and a healer and Malakis is a dragon shifter. Um, so Malakis is a dragon bound to a man's body. His mother places a spell on him when he was a child where he cannot shift into his dragon form unless he has a certain object that she has created. But when her mother dies, that magical item she's created gets stolen. So Malakis has been tracking down this item for years because he wants to finally be able to be in his dragon form. Then one day when he is searching for the object, he comes across a woman in a market named Halani, who is our heroine. Halani travels with her family across the empire in a caravan. She cares for her mother, Azel, and is secretly an earth witch. Malakis gets injured while at the market and Halani takes it upon herself to heal him and nurse him back to health. Um, the two of them spend time with each other and then they start to realize that they cannot live without the other person. I love this so much. So sneaking much. I love the couple. Malakis was so swoony. I love how much he cared for Halani and her mother, Azel. Azel is one of my favorite characters of all time. I love her. Halani's mother. Oh my gosh. I adore her. Azel's brain and temperament is of a child. And so she's like a child in an old woman's body. Halani just cares for her like 
she's her own daughter, but she's also her mother. And Malachus just loves Azel so much and falls in love with both of these women. And oh my gosh, he is so sweet. I need more people to read this book, but you definitely need to read book one before you get this one. Cause you meet Helani and Azel in the previous book and you meet the villain of the story in book one. And I don't think you would hate her as much if you did not read book one first. A 10 out of 10, recommend. I love this one, give this one five stars. <sighs> so there you have it. Uh, sorry for this train wreck of a video. I feel like that's happened in a lot of videos of mine recently where it just hasn't worked out well <laughs> with a filming, which sucks. And I hate how phones do this. <laughs> I hate how they do this. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can comment a, um, I don't know, an X emoji, the X out emoji, because this was just a train wreck of a video and I am so sorry. <laughs> um, anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.